Welcome to our first online local history talk. I'm Rochelle Bull, local history officer with Gympie Regional Libraries. We'd love to hear your stories too. So if you have any memories or knowledge, or even some photos to share, here are our contact details. Did you know we have a blog also? GimpyRegionalMemories.com. Check it out. Today we showcase some of our servo and garage history from the Gympie region. Here are some snippets on the screen from the newspaper. We also have a funny little story from 1952 in the Gympie Times. It was reported that there was a large amount of interest displayed in the new electric petrol browsers installed in Gympie. They hilariously wrote, Maybe soon we will have all electric mechanics, you know, robots, and instead of tipping them, you just turn them around and fill their radiators with water. I think this is quite funny, considering now we do have robotics and automation in the mechanic industry. Let's take a look at A.V. Lilly. Mr. Vernon Lilly came to Gympie in 1928 after six years of his own business in Karoi. He opened up a workshop near the Royal Hotel in the old Theatre Royal as a General Motors dealer, selling Chevrolet, Buicks and Oldsmobiles. In 1931, he moved the business to the corner of Shannon and Mary Streets. It was reported that there was space for four cars in the new showroom and Mr. Lilly had on view a 1931 Chevrolet, which was one of the finest outputs of the General Motors Limited. He also had on display a latest model Oldsmobile and a GMC truck. Mr. Lilly had commenced earlier in the motor trade as an apprentice on the 12th of September 1913 to Mr. A.J. Lever. An interesting contract that saw him making a payment to Mr. Lever of a £50 bond and signing papers that excluded him from entering taverns, inns or alehouses and which precluded him from playing cards, dice or any other unlawful games and which expressly precluded him from entering contracts of matrimony. In 1951, Mr Lilly constructed a workshop in Nash Street. From earlier 1948 through to 1970, Lilly sold and serviced the General Motors Holden products and then later on specialised in Holden services and a spare parts department from the old bank building in Shannon Street. On the 3rd of December 1973, Ken Hammond of Hammond Ford acquired the land and buildings of A.V. Lilly. Mr. Roy Gibson, who was workshop manager with A.V. Lilly & Co. since 1945 and had also been working for A.V. Lilly since 1934, was retained as workshop manager for the new owners of Hammond Ford. The Gympie Times of 10th of September 1938 reported a runaway motor car that caused stir in Upper Mary Street when it careered down the incline leading from Shannon Street into Mary Street and after striking another vehicle, finally came to rest with a resounding crash against the side wall of Lily's garage. The car was owned by Constable Blackadder, a member of the Gympie Police Force. The vehicle had parked outside the Labour Bureau and the owner went to transact some business. The only occupant of the vehicle was his small son. The child apparently released the handbrake of the car which moved backwards down the incline in a diagonal direction. Unfortunately, Mr Bonnie's Chevrolet car was parked on the opposite side of the street in front of the petrol pumps of Lily's garage and this runaway vehicle struck it sideways, causing damage to the right mudguard and front bumper bar. The force of the impact smashed a portion of the side wall of the building and broke pieces of two large asbestos sheets and a heavy timber stud about four feet long was showered into the inside room. Unfortunately, no one was in the room at the time, but it was the office of Mr Lilly. The runaway vehicle was not damaged to any extent and the youthful occupant did not appear to be unduly alarmed 
at his exciting experience. Now let's look at City Motor Garage, otherwise known as Batson's. They were a motor and electrical engineer. It was Ernest William Batson that opened City Motor Garage in Mary Street in 1916, about where Bella Castle Homeware Store is now, and it used to be the Commonwealth Bank and barbecues galore. He lived on top with his wife Kit and his family, and the garage and service station was underneath. When Batson was in the position to buy his own property, the business was then moved to Mellor Street in 1922, further trading there for 60 plus years as Batson's service and filling station. Here we have a lovely photo, that is Ernie Batson standing in front of a Republic truck that's loaded with bananas. The driver was Fred Dam. This is out the front of the Gympie Railway Station. Batson learnt how to repair motor cars in Brisbane and his wife, Kit, assisted by driving visitors, including school inspectors, around the region in their hire cars, which were kept behind the garage. Daughter Athalie remembered many times she was bogged to the axles. Here is another photo of one of Batson's hire vehicles. It appears to be parked on what would be Lawrence Street. You can see the road quite dirt and gravelly and it's overlooking Carlton Hill with Mary Street in the background. Here are some wonderful advertisements from the Gimba Times of 1938. Batson City Motor Garage was the agent for the following cars listed in 1927. Dodge Brothers 4 and 6 cylinder, Essex 6 cylinder, Hudson 6 cylinder, Graham Brothers 4 and 6 cylinder trucks, Lister petrol engines, lighting plants, Perlin batteries which were non-sulfating and rid milking machines. The truck in this photo belonged to Monty Smith of Dagan. It was a 1929 Dodge DA cut down by Jackie Smith of J Smith and Sons River Road. It was the first vehicle cut down by this firm. It was also used in their advertisements of J Smith & Sons. The City Motor Garage performed all classes of car repairs. Their mechanics were on duty day and and night for emergency work. They held a large stock of spare parts for various makes of cars. Dorr Brothers Garage was established in 1946 by brothers Maxwell and Harold Dorr. Harold left the business to take up a career in refrigeration, whilst Max became sole owner and remained in the business for many years. Max completed his apprenticeship at Carter's Garage before the war and the brothers opened up the garage about two years after their war service. Door Brothers Garage original site is where Pizza Hut is now, on the Bruce Highway. Back then, when in the late 1940s, the road was dirt and the site was overgrown with vines and neglected trees. Max and Harold cleared the site and were surprised by a discovery of an old miner's hut with picks, shovels and equipment inside, even the plates and mugs set up on the table. There was a tar mark around the walls of the hut that indicated the site of the 1893 flood height. Jim Shepherd built the original garage on this site with timber from Walker's Mill at Glastonbury and Fred Finselback, who lived next door, was the first employed mechanic. Max used to work a lot on cream trucks and by the 1950s, the garage had petrol browsers at the front of the workshop. They would work through the night repairing cream trucks, which had to be back on the road for morning farm pickups. Dual Brothers Garage also repaired many of the district's timber trucks. Max kept up his mechanical knowledge through the years with advancements of the automobile industry. He had an extensive library of mechanical books 
which was intact when he retired. In 1986, Max's son, Bernard, became the garage's second owner, and in 2012, the third owner was Matthew, Max's grandson and Bernie's son. It was passed down through the generations of the family, and it still continues to trade today. Dawes Garage has had a few moves. In 1990, Pizza Hut bought their original site, and in September 1991, the building was dismantled and a new one built where Hungry Jack's is now. In November 2007, when Hungry Jack's bought the site, the shed workshop was lifted up by Crane and moved to its current trading location on Hind Street. Gilliland and Dunwoody started their business in Mellor Street circa 1925 and gained a reputation for good workmanship for motor repairs. This photo is looking down Mellor Street towards where Fiveways would be now. We can see the garage on the right. It's a wonderful photo. Look at the Calton Hill views, the St. Patrick's Church, the Lewis and Coop bus and the boy holding onto the bus with the bicycle. It's just beautiful. In the Courier Mail of the 29th of January 1934, it was reported, On Saturday, a man hired a Whippet motor car from Gilliland's garage and paid a deposit, saying that he wanted the vehicle urgently to see his father at Cinnabar, 40 miles away. He said that if Mr Gilliland wanted the car earlier than the time of expiry of the rental, on the following day, he should ring a number at Cinnabar. Subsequently, inquiries showed that there was no such telephone number at Cinnabar and that neither the man nor his father were known there. No news of the car has been received. Here is a 1959 advertisement. Now let's take a look at the Gimpy Motor Company. It was one of our earliest garages. They specialised in spray painting, oxyweld and mechanical repairs. The Gimpy Motor Company was a General Motors authorised dealer for Pontiac Cars and Utilities, Cadillac, GMC Trucks, Oldsmobile, Oakland and Vauxhall. In 1916, they were part of a published notice in the Gimpy Times and the Mary River Mining Gazette on the increased prices of petrol and accessories as a company with higher cars. In December 1927, in the Brisbane Courier, the wonderful new 1928 Oakland was advertised and the Gimpy Motor Company was an agent. However, by June 1928, the Gimpy Motor Company was in voluntary liquidation. Now we take a look at Roy Otto's Ever Ready service station. It was on the corner of River Road and Monkland Streets. RR Thomas Central Garage is on the left. In the early 1930s, the original Otto service station was demolished and replaced by a two story building. The building was built in 1931 for the Medill family as an investment. The timber used in the construction of the building was taken from the Medill family property at Southside, which has sadly since burnt down. The timber was milled at Cook's Sawmill in Chapel Street. The pine in the building came from an engine winding shed at the Scottish Gold Mine at Monkland, and it was also milled at Stan Smith's Mill at Barter Street. This is the same photo as previous, but I zoomed in so you can see a little bit more detail. This photo shows the parade outside of Otto's service station in 1937 for the governor's visit. If you look closely, you can see all the people sneaking a peek from the top apartment. Roy Otto moved his business up the road to the corner of Monkland and Reef Streets. 
he slept on site and offered 24-hour service. This photo is from 1947 at Roy Otto's newer location on the corner of Monkland and Reef Streets. Medill's Garage started when brothers Tom and Alex Medill started selling Vauxhills, Pontiacs and Bedford trucks from a tin shed in 1935. Tom was 16 at the time. This was on the corner of Monkland and Reef Streets. Two years later, in 1937, they moved diagonally across the road to their father's building on the corner of River Road and Monkland Street, where Roy Otto's service station used to be. John Medill had built the new building in 1931 as an investment. There were flats above the garage. They took over running the building as a garage with Eager's dealership and running spare parts which led them to build another section to accommodate. Their business closed for four years when the brothers served in World War II and on their return they started the business again from scratch. Prior to the war, they had been trading under the Carlton name. However, on their return, found someone else trading under Carlton, so started a new business, Medill Service Station, with Tom reopening the garage in a partnership and Alex managing the spare parts. It became known as Medill's Corner. It was once a block of land occupied by a blacksmith shop with a rubbish, rubbish dump in the background over towards Nelson's Reserve. Here is our segue to the Carlton Motor Company. In 1935, the Carlton Motor Corporation had grown to include seven dealerships and three service stations. Medill's business went from strength to strength over numerous decades with extensions, expansions and separate sites and as at 2020 included seven businesses. The building on the corner of Monkland and River Road was pulled down in 2003 and rebuilt. Medills this year in 2020 have called it a day in Gympie. At the end of February 2020, Medills handed over to new owners the Brisbane-based company Motorama. Now let's take a look at the Olds Motor Company, which was William Olds & Co. The Olds Motor Company was established in 1918. This photo in 1920 shows the back of the shop in Reef Street, Gympie. The photo shows them holding a poor throw crankshaft. Jack Rammett is holding this. This was a replacement for the broken one being held by the man on his left. It was for an early Maxwell model, the first taxi in Gympie. The new crankshaft was machined from a slab of SD21 alloy steel. Mr William Olds Senior was born in Cornwall and arrived in Queensland around 1870. He was 18 years old when he came to Gympie because of mining. William Senior was a very skilled machinist and in machine technology. William Jr., born in 1890, gained many, many talents from his father. He learnt the understandings and workings of steam power and in 1906, as a 16-year-old, he built a working model steam winding engine that went on to win a silver medal at the Gympie Show. These skills earned him an electrical and mechanical engineer's apprenticeship at the Gympie Scottish Gold Mining Company, where he mastered his trade. For a few years, William Jr. worked in the railways as a mechanic in Maryborough. He met his future wife, Ivy, there. After an accident, he finished with the railways and started working in Brisbane and would return to Toronto on weekends where his father then resided. William Jr. enlisted in World War I in 1916. After the war, he married Ivy and set up his light engineering and car agency in Gympie with his two brothers. Another photo from 1920, this time the front of the shop on Reef Street. The cars in the forefront are a 490 Chevrolet at left and a 1913 Hupmobile, known as the shop car. The shop to the left 
of the building is Tobin's Laundry Shop. This is a photo of the shop front in 1925. It's claimed to be the first petrol bowser in Gympie. Operated by crank of several turns in each direction, given a quarter of a gallon each cycle of about two to three turns. The showroom is connected by ramp for working underneath. A photo of the shop car. This is parked out the front of the Fallen Soldiers Memorial Park. The bandstand in the background. In 1927, the Olds Motor Company were agents for Chevrolet Cars and Trucks, Oldsmobile, Buick, GMC Trucks, Moffat Virtue Milking Plants, Kerosene Engines, Spare Parts, Oils and Grease. Now let's take a look at Sheedy Motors. They were agents for Overland, Whippet, Willys Knights and Trucks. In 1927, they advertised, here at last is a motor car that you can drive as fast as you like with the utmost ease of control, that will stop 51 feet from a speed of 40 miles an hour, that will run 30 miles on an imperial gallon of petrol, well over a thousand miles on a gallon of oil, and should save you from 15 to 20 percent of its original cost each year by its economies in petrol, oil, tyres and mechanical costs. You simply Owe it to yourself to find out what the Whippet offers before considering any other light car today. We are proud of the Whippet and shall be delighted to demonstrate the car for you. In February 1926, a strange motor mishap was reported. The circumstances surrounding the mishap to a car in River Road on Sunday night, says the Gimpy Times, appear to be wrapped in mystery. So far, as could be ascertained yesterday, the car was the property of Sheedy Motors and was lent to some persons for the day. The car evidently ran up an embankment and overturned and was abandoned by the occupants. Up to a late hour yesterday, the persons who borrowed the car had not reported the mishap to the owner. We can also see here in 1928, there's also an ad advertisement by Sheedy Motors for sale of an ambulance Dodge car. With fully equipped, the tyres, engine in wonderful order, would suit country ambulance. Now we head to the Mary Valley. Imble's first garage is written about in Joy King's wonderful book, Imble the Jewel of the Mary Valley. It was built and owned by Arda Gilroy and known as Gilroy Service Station situated on the Yabba Creek side of the street on the second block from the railway. The first person to run the garage was Arthur Girdler. The garage was an agent for Morris One Ton Trucks, Morris Cowley and Morris Oxford Cars and Dennison Garford Trucks. It changed hands in 1926 to Mr A Baldwin and later Skeleton. The building was eventually used for packing Debosia leaf, corkwood, which grew wild in the forestry and an ingredient in a drug manufactured by a French company before the building was dismantled and erected on the opposite side of the creek. A new garage, Sims Garage, was later built down the road by landholder Richard Wilter Sims, circa 1944-1945, and it was established in conjunction with relative Mrs Sims Horseshoe Cafe and Takeaway next to the garage. It was well known as the Fish and Chip Shop. Kilkeven has had quite a few garages in its history. We don't have photos for all of them, but in 1923, there was a premises known as the Kilkeven Motor Garage was purchased by Mr E. A. Dakin. In July 1926, in the Wide Bay and Burnett Advertiser, a dance was held by the football club in the town's new garage, and about 20 couples had a most enjoyable evening. The new garage was commenced by Messrs Courtman and Truscott 
to undertake all classes of motor repairs. It was reported the garage will fill a long-felt want in Kilkeven, as a large number of cars now in the district are forced to go outside for repair work. This photo here of the Kilkeven Mercantile Company. Sadly, this building was destroyed and burnt down in 1930. It's a beautiful photo and we love that it shows the petrol bowser at the front of the shop. In 1924, Gamary was reported in the Brisbane Daily Mail as steadily growing and a prosperous little town, well placed on the map. The township reporting to have two garages at the time and over 100 residences. One of these garages was run by the Anderson Brothers, a produce department and garage on Moore Street, Gamary. In June 1925, it was reported in the Brisbane Courier that the Anderson brothers, proprietors of a local garage, are erecting a concrete building adjoining their workshops to be used as offices and a motor showroom. This is the first of several concrete buildings to be built in Gamary, the other, the Masonic Hall, nearing completion. The disastrous fire of the old Andersons building, 1927, December. A disastrous fire occurred at Gamary early on Saturday morning when Anderson Brothers' new hall, a motor garage, a blacksmith shop and a tailor's shop were totally destroyed. The hall was used on Friday night for a dance which terminated about 1.30am. About an hour afterwards, flames were noticed issuing from the building. The whole building quickly became enveloped in flames which spread to the adjoining garage. Here the fire soon devoured valuable plant and fittings including large stocks of tyres and accessories. Three motor vehicles were totally destroyed. One was a Buick car belonging to the Anderson brothers another a truck, the property of Maudsley Brothers, the butchers, and the third, an Oakland car which had been parked there for the night. In addition, two motorcycles were destroyed. These are just some of the other garages and surveys in the Gippie region. There are many more. If you have any memories or stories, photos even, we'd love to hear from you. And to conclude, here is a postcard of the giant pineapple, the Pineapple Servo. It was also a tourist information centre, service station and garage. And just to remind you about our wonderful blog, GympieRegionalMemories.com. We will be sharing these online local history talks and some of the information on our blog. We would love for you to have a look. Thank you for listening to our first online local history talk. Here are our contact details again if you have anything you wish to share with us. Thank you.